I want everyone to take uh, two minutes here. And uh, I just want you to uh, read over the scenario. And then we can talk about it. This is from that Texas Science of Teaching Read the Exam. I love it. Uh, this is just the prompt to it. So just take two minutes and read it to yourself. Pause me now, and then we'll talk, okay? Go ahead. Now, whenever they give you a picture, a diagram, a table of, of some sort, you should always take a few moments, and let's just say 10 seconds. 10 seconds is enough. 10 seconds to look about what it's about. And this says here, sorting verbs with the ED inflection. Okay. And we know that ED is an example of an allomorph, meaning that it's going to have a different pronunciation, same spelling, but different pronunciation in each of these different, for different words, right? So sometimes it makes the T sound in kicked. Sometimes it makes the D sound in tagged. Sometimes it makes the rest, the D, ed sound in rested, right? So you could get that right away. Oh, this is an allomorph question in 10 seconds. Okay, we also know that this could be confusing uh, for someone who's um, learning it for the first time or learning English for the first time. So <clears throat> this could also be connected to, this could fit into a scenario. I would not be surprised it if it was a scenario with an English language learner, and it is, okay? Because this would, this would not only, the oral language, when a child develops oral language, a lot of the oral language that they get exposure to happens very early on before they ever get to your classroom, right? And if for students that are learning English for a sec as a second language, they've got to go back, learn it, again, learn it for the first time, and they're a lot older. So they haven't had that exposure early on, the same way a student that has acquired English since they were just a baby, right? So, so this would definitely be something that might need to be clarified. Okay, so, so that we could have gotten in 10 seconds, right? Possibly. Yes, maybe. Okay, so here it goes. 32 says, uh, we'll get to the question in just a moment. A first grade teacher is working with a small group of students, including, oh, English language learners and speakers of various dialects of English. As part of a series of lessons on inflectional endings, ED, the teacher helps the students sort a list of inflected verbs according to their final sound or syllable which is exactly what we got within the first 10 seconds of looking at the picture. The teacher selects the verbs from, uh, from a text that the students, okay. The teacher selects the verbs from a text the students are currently reading. The students completed word sort chart is shown below. Okay, so we got the chart. So really team, it's almost like we didn't need this, right? I mean, we kind of had it within the first 10 seconds. Now it does tell us that this is first grade, so these are still, you know, beginner readers, beginner to transitional readers. And it's definitely working with, you know, beginner readers if it's English language learner, because they're going to be coming in, okay, acquiring these skills. And it's only first grade now. So we're already in that beginner zone. Okay. All right. So now let's get to the question. Uh, take a moment. And I want you to um, take a moment and uh, two minutes and read the question. Go ahead. And unpause. Always got to pause me. You pause. You're done. You read it. I get it. It's a longer question. You have the opening, which takes time. And then you have the question that takes time. Hopefully, within the first 10 seconds of just looking at the picture, you realize this was an allomorph question, right? And so you already have that in your head that it's dealing with a specific allomorph, the ED allomorph, right? That would need to be clarified, right? Okay, it says here, the teacher strategy of having the students sort and pronounce inflected verbs is likely to benefit the English language learner and speakers of various dialects, primarily in which the following ways. Okay, well, let's see. How's it not going to help them? Um, by providing the student with multiple opportunities to encode the verbs to promote fluent writing. So here's the thing about the encoding piece. The spelling is the same. So that's really not going to help with the sort because the sorting, 
you're not sorting words that have different spelling patterns. These all have the same spelling pattern at the end of the word. The, inflect, the inflectional suffix is spelled the same on all of them. So it's not going to really help with that piece because they all have the same spelling. So that's out. Uh, um, how about this one right here? Uh, how about this one right here? By providing the students with extra practice applying phonics patterns in their reading and writing. Well, here's the thing. Um, you are helping them, yes, with some letter sound correspondence. That's true. But this one is a letter sound correspondence pattern that changes. So, yes, the activity does help with clarifying this particular one, the ED sound in reading and writing, right? But but I don't think that's that's the um, that might not be enough. That's not the the, the entire purpose uh, of this right here, okay? Um, but that this could be a very I, I could see myself leaning towards that one. How about this one right here? By helping the student make a connection between the spelling and the meaning of a variety of common English verbs. So um, I don't, uh, spelling and meaning. Well, the spelling is the same, so it's past tense. And the meaning is going to be uh, some, a vocab thing. I don't think it's an, I don't think they're doing this for a spelling thing because it has to do, they're sorting it based on sound, right? It's not that, it's not that. Okay, how about this one? By helping the students learn to perceive and produce inflections, that may not use, uh, they may not use in their everyday speech. Well, let me read that again. By helping the students learn to perceive and produce inflections that they may not use in their everyday speech. Okay, so this is tricky. But what it's saying is, we're going to target these inflections. And the teacher knows that these inflections each have a different pronunciation. And they know they're working with a group of students that they're coming to English as a second language. And some of those sounds and some of those inflections aren't going to match up with language one. So it would make sense if a student is coming in and, and the pronunciation, they, they have a different set of maybe uh, uh, pronunciations of some of the words might not match with language two. And it, this is going to have a suffix that is very confusing because its pronunciation changes in language two depending on the word then this is going to help that student clarify uh, not only how to pronounce the words, but when to pronounce the word, when to pronounce the, the t, the d, the ed, right? So helping the student to perceive. So um, I guess to identify the different uh, ways in which this allomorph is pronounced and produce, pr practice, you know, producing these words with the correct pronunciation um, that they may not use in their in their everyday speech. So this is something that, hey, it may not, uh, these are sounds that uh, there may be gaps in language one to language two. And for some of the students, some of these sounds they might not have an exposure to. That's a tough one. It's tough because it doesn't say, um, it doesn't give you the obvious answer. The obvious answer would be the teachers working on allomorphs to help the student with her, with uh, with uh, word uh, inflections that had different endings, right? That would have been an obvious answer. This isn't as obvious. That, that's why I really like it. It's a good one. Okay, now now look, team. Um, these are good ones to practice. You get to practice crossing out this one right here and crossing out this one right here. Why is this one wrong? By providing the student with that extra practice by applying phonics patterns. Um, the phonics pattern you're doing is ED, okay? And um, it's consistent throughout. I think that this could have been a close second. What, what C is missing, what C is not taking into account and why it's wrong is that the, the scenario that we're looking at here, it include, it's working with English language learners. And so they would, they would need to work on this confusing rule and clarify it. And, and first, hear it. Okay, so I know that this is the past tense, uh, in, the inflection, past tense inflection, right? I get it. Okay, but now I've got to really hear how this sounds different than this, sounds different than this, even though they're spelled all the same in these everyday words. So that's what this one kind of glosses over. C doesn't really take that into account, but B does. B is a much more precise answer for this particular group of students in this specific scenario? So great question. Great job.
Okay. Uh, I think I'm like grading the, the writers of this test, but this is a better question. Um, so, okay, let's now let's look at the answer. The answer is B. You get uh, exposure to some of these ideas. And now you're able to spot your friend. Next time you see it, you'll know it's an allomorph. Okay. And it has a, it has a, a the, infl the pronunciation of that inflection changes, which means it's going to have to be uh, specific, uh, specifically clarified in instructional activities. Okay. Because it would be confusing. Great question from the science of teaching reading test. The answer is 32. And uh, keep going, team. Don't get discouraged on these. What you're trying to do is build your, your database of experiences and scenarios on these exams. I say that I like it only because I, I think it gives you a, a juicy scenario, a juicy scenario that you can study, put in your pocket, and maybe on the day of the test you can use. Okay, but first you have to have exposure to it. All right, okay, let's keep going, okay? All right, let's keep going.